Hi guys, for your viewing pleasure today, we've got a compilation of Africa's deadliest tree snakes. Kurt's off on another crazy adventure with his wild man crew. And if you like this content and you'd like to see more of it, don't forget to like and subscribe. The subtropical forests on the eastern coast of South Africa form an umbrella of evergreen and deciduous trees. This high rainfall region creates a mosaic of plant species, all competing for the precious sunlight peeping through the forest canopy. This breathtaking habitat is one of the last true Edens in South Africa. But even the Garden of Eden had a snake. All is not what it seems. A long, thin vine swaying almost imperceptibly in the breeze. One could reach out and touch it before you realize this isn't a vine. Also known as the twig or bird snake. The vine snake has mastered the art of camouflage. Their intricate markings, varying from mottled brown to green, help them blend perfectly with their surroundings. Perched motionless, it moves almost imperceptibly, perfectly mimicking the swaying of the vine. This is an expert ambush hunter. If lucky enough to spot one, they are easily identified by the shape of their head. Unlike any other snake in Africa, mostly active during the day, they have excellent binocular vision and will readily snatch unassuming birds off of branches, as well as ambushing small rodents or amphibians. Like the boomslang, it produces hemotoxic venom. Envenomation disables the coagulation of blood, causing internal hemorrhaging. Victims bleed to death. Unlike the boomslang, there is no anti-venom. Vine snake, look at the tongue. Now look, when I get any closer, he's going to inflate that throat to three or four times the size. Look at this. Moves his head like a leaf. So he's completely camouflaged right now. I just saw him because he was moving around. Look when I get closer. Look at that tongue coming out. That is incredible. Wow. Look at that green head is exactly matching the leaves. His head's a leaf. His, look at that inflating the throat. Incredibly potent hemotoxic venom. No anti venom for the snake. Stop bleeding out of your eyes, stop bleeding out of every orifice on your body. You've got quite a bit of time to get to the hospital, but an incredibly powerful hemotoxic venom. Look at that. Yo! Oh, he just struck at me. The snake means business. Look at that. Yo! Oh. Inflating his throat, showing me. Look at that. Just like a boom slug. He's tree dwellers, he's warning me now, he's now in full strike position. Almost like an S, look at that S shape. S squirrel, he lunges out with the mouth open, makes himself look really big, look at that. That is incredible. You're always angry. You're always coming for me. Really upset, gotta be so careful, he's so aware the snake, of his surroundings. And he's got back fangs, but quite large the back fangs, so he can easily bite me on any body part. And this, this snake in particular looks to be not very happy with me being very close. And you don't want to take a chance with a snake like this. If he bites me, there's no antivenom, so I'll have to do a full blood transfusion. He's not overly aggressive, but he's really warning me. When you see that inflated throat, it's like a cobra making a hood. He's telling me, come any closer than this. This is my safe zone here, about 40 centimeters away from him. And he could lunge out. 
but at the moment he's pretty calm. Even though the throat's inflated, he's still telling me, hey, don't come closer. Look at the mouth's opening, look at the mouth opening. Yeah, he's gonna lunge out at me. Now you have to be really careful. Huffing, he is upset. These snakes can get to about 1.2 meters. He looks close to a meter, so a fully grown adult vine snake. And it doesn't take much of his venom to be dangerous to me. So what the snake will do is he'll hunt down chameleons, small mammals, and even birds. Moving up through the forest canopy, coming down to drink water, just gliding through the forest, designed for forest living and tree living. But every time I get close, and he's got binocular vision, you can see the eyes. The pupil is like binoculars and his vision is incredible. And he can see me in full color right now. So there's no way he's not seeing me. So every time I get a bit closer, he inflates the throat. And he's calmed down now. But as soon as I touch this tail, as soon as I get close to the tail, look at that. I'm not even, not touching even yet, look at that. And he inflates. Trying to keep him stable. To grab the snake by the tail is really difficult because he is so aware. Dad, okay, this is it. Look at this. You can bite through my pants. The back fangs are large enough. Like his face off here, he's staring at me. There's so much intelligence in the eyes of the snake. Just the way he's looking at me. Almost from a front on like this, almost looks like a seahorse. Look how weird he is. Every movement I make, he knows what I'm doing. Because he relies on his eyesight to hunt. So with snakes like your viper families, they don't rely that much on vision, they rely more on their scent. These guys rely on vision, so his eyesight is incredible. Look at that, you see, just touch the tail. And he's, look at this. Doesn't like that. Some snakes just do not want to be touched. And he's definitely one of those. He's asking me very nice, please, I'm big and fat, leave me alone. And that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave him be. Very lucky find, a very rare snake. The vine snake is not a snake that's very often encountered. And it doesn't cause too many fatalities. Mostly snake handlers actually get bit by these snakes. Because the chance of an average civilian running into these vine snakes are very rare. And as you can see, even though I'm within the kind of strike range, he's moving the head. He doesn't want to bite me. He doesn't want to waste that venom. These forests host a variety of wildlife. Kurt stumbles upon one of the country's biggest centipedes. I love these rotten logs and soil. They'll hunt down earthworms and all kinds of other invertebrates, even sometimes catching small frogs and rodents. One this size could easily take out a small, small rodent. So I want to be quite gentle. They do pack a punch, they do have a venom. Don't want to particularly get bit on the hand by one of these. There we go, look at this. Yo, it's a massive centipede. In Africa, we get really big ones. You can see this is easily a 10 centimeter, 12 centimeter centipede. Right in the front, you can see the forciples. And that's why he, he bites and injects his venom. Now this venom can cause lots of swelling, can get lightheaded, just have to stay quite focused. I don't know, it's so difficult to predict them. But in theory, all animals, no matter how creepy or venomous, they should all have a soft side to them because they evolved that venom to help them in hunting. It does secrete an odor for defense. But the venom injection is only as a last resort. And look, he's settling already. You can see the antennae, that's how he senses. They're almost, almost completely blind. They can't really see. So he uses that antennae to sense where he's going. Now I've exposed him to the sun and all these different things, so he's freaking out a bit. He is looking a little bit upset with me. And you can see those forciples are massive. You can imagine a bite from this. There's gonna be a tremendous amount of pain and swelling on the hand. These two things are just legs, but they look like their tail. Now these centipedes can get really big. You get ones in Africa that can get close to 20 centimeters. And then in South America, you get even ones up to 30 centimeters. And one this size could take on a small newborn snake. But as they get really big, they've even been recorded catching bats mid-flight. So formidable predators, incredible animals. And one of the most feared animals on the planet by humans. Lots of African myths where these centipedes will climb into your ear. 
You can see the four supports clearly there. He's warning me now. You can see he's pushed them out. Massive, massive fighting apparatus. You'll pinch down like this and you'll inject that venom. And I would most likely get a massively swollen hand and feel quite lightheaded and maybe even have a bit of a fever. So out here in the forest is not really something I would want to experience. So I'm going to pay him a lot of respect. But look at that. He is actually quite settled down quite a lot now. By far one of the most creepy creatures you can find out in the forest. And this is what nightmares are made of. But actually if I look at it in a different light, it's actually quite a beautiful, cute little creature. And look, he's not, he's actually almost shy. Look at that. He feels the gentle touch. He's not moving around anymore. It's actually incredible. Wow, look at the size of him. That is impressive. Oh. They have been recorded catching amphibians, even tadpoles. And you can see actually his legs are so powerful, he can actually grip inside the flow of water. Look at that, I'm just gonna help him on here. Look at the underside, it's so beautiful. There we go. Never trust a pretty face. The Boomslung. Their primary prey. Birds. They are drop for drop one of the most venomous snakes in the world. Its potent hemotoxic venom is slow to act. Symptoms could take hours to manifest. At first, headaches, nausea, dizziness. The victims become drowsy and confused. As the venom courses through the bloodstream, it causes catastrophic hemorrhaging in the brain and muscle tissue. Without treatment, the victim bleeds to death. Kurt is determined to prove that the creatures we fear most aren't monsters. If treated with the respect they deserve, no one needs to get hurt. He believes knowledge can abolish fear. Bright black and yellow Cape male Wormslung. They crawl out along these ledges to actually absorb the heat. It's still early in the morning, look how he's inflating the throat, making it double the size. So they call Wormslung, which means tree snake, that they live in trees. But actually, out here in the Cape, they can also be found on these, these cliffs, these edges where you'll find birds' nests and all kinds of other rodents. And they love to come out in the morning sun and actually bask. And then he just caught this guy for his little morning bath in the sun. Like he's getting a little bit upset, but if I'm very gentle. Oh, oh, look at that. Flating that throat. Coming for my face. Oh, he is very upset and I do not want to get bit in the face. A very potent hemotoxic venom. Now, hemotoxic venom actually makes you bleed out of all your orifices in your body. So I start bleeding out of my eyes, out of my ears. And drop for drop, one of the most venomous snakes in Africa. Only one milligram of the snake's venom is required to have a negative effect on you. And if you don't get medical treatment, you will die within 24 hours to three day period. This is the safe range that I'm in now. If I go any closer than this, you could get me in the face. And you don't want to get bit in the face by the snake. Calm down, calm down. Very relaxed, let's try and get you. Oh, he's gonna come back. It's all about reading their body language. And that's like, look at him. He knows I've got the back of his tail here. Ready to lunge at me. Incredible vision. Oh. Got it. That is incredible, the snake is really upset. Oh. He is not happy at the moment. Now he's fully charged. And the sun. There we go. Then he's starting to calm down a bit. Let's relax. Let's relax, my boy. Yo! The snake is upset with me. And it's not that he's even being that aggressive. He's just warning me. Leave me alone. 
And actually just bumping there against me. He's actually not even really biting me. He's just warning me. I'm going to just see if I can calm him down a little bit. Normally these worm slungs, if you just handle them very gently for a little bit and he realizes that I'm actually not harming him, he's starting to settle a bit now already. Still checking me out, but you see the throat stopped inflating. Even these snakes that are so feared, that people think are so dangerous, one milligram kills a fully grown man. If you're so gentle, like he's actually trying to climb up me now. Oh, he spotted my face again, thinks I wanted to bite him. I'm going to be so aware. I'm just going to stay calm and relax. He's calming down a little bit. That's calming down. They're an active day hunter. With those big, large eyes, diurnal eyes, they actually hunt their prey down with speed. So anything from small rodents to birds to chameleons and lizards out here on these cliffs. And they grab onto their prey and chew their large back fangs into the prey and hold on, inject that very potent hemotoxic venom and then swallow the prey in one go. Look at that, he's starting to relax now. Is he not, not inflating the throat anymore? It's really hot, you couldn't have him any more charged than he is right now. And because snakes are cold blooded, they use the sun to warm up, and when they're fully charged like this by the sun, this is the time they go hunt. I've got a lot of respect for this worm slung. There's quite an old boy, it's definitely a, probably about an eight to 10 year old male, looking at the length of the snake. And because it's a, a colorful black and yellow, the males are black and yellow and the females are more of an olivey brown color. So definitely a male and he's quite old and you can see he's quite big and he's been living out here in the mountains for almost eight to 10 years. Okay, boy, can you let me try and put you back on the cliff. While in search of the deadliest snakes in the Cape, Kurt comes across a reptile common in these parts. Look at what we found here. A tiny baby angulated tortoise. He doesn't have an egg tooth on him anymore, so he's a couple of months old. So he hatched probably about three or four months ago. Still a tiny, tiny baby. Only one out of 20 of these babies will probably realistically make it to adult size. Not a deadly animal, but a real precious precious little creature and plays a very important part of the ecosystem surrounded by all these deadly animals. Finding snakes is no easy task, but South Africa teems with life. The garden orb web spider. You can find them in the middle of the wilderness and you can find them in your garden. Beautifully marked, intricate little spots and colorations unique to each individual. Look at the strength of this web. Quite relaxed the spider. Look, I can be quite close. He feels a vibration on the web, like this, and he thinks, ah, oh, there's an insect in there. Look, he thinks there's something stuck. You see there? He's coming to bite me, because he thinks I'm a moth. On their little legs, they hold on, and it's like fishing. They feel a vibration in the web, and they run, they bite, they inject their venom, and then they slowly digest the insect that they've just bitten. How well camouflaged is this snake? This is actually a highly venomous snake. It's a boom slung. Even though the general characteristics of worm slung are they normally greenish or a, a, a black and yellow color, when they're babies like this, juveniles, a year old, they are a completely different color. You can see the same color as the bark on this tree here. Completely camouflaged, but look at the big eyes. That's the characteristic of the worm slung. The big rugby ball shaped head with the big diurnal eyes. So these guys hunt actively during the day. Even though he's so small, he's still got enough venom to kill me. So never underestimate a snake just because he's small. Really well camouflaged, just sitting here hunting little birds. So he's going and patrolling through these bushes looking for newborn birds because he's just still small and small chameleons and small lizards. That's what he's out hunting here. And I almost didn't even see him, walked right past him and he's just absolutely camouflaged. And you can see he just darts off. If I didn't move quickly, he would have been gone. So they don't really come out to try and get you. They get away as quickly as possible. But the Boomslang is a very, very feared snake in Africa because drop for drop, they are our most venomous snake in Africa. Incredibly potent hemotoxic venom, which makes you bleed out of every orifice on the body. Very unique, he's really beautiful when they're small like this. A back fang, and I'm very gentle with the snake. He doesn't actually really want any, any cause me any problems. I'm not squeezing him, he's just very open handed, very gentle. And all he wants to do is move back. You can see all he wants to do is go back to his branch. And I'll let him go on his way so he can go hunt some small birds and so on. Just want to show you the beautiful emerald green colored eye that he's got. When they're small like this, they've got this beautiful emerald green colored eye. This eye will change color as they get older. This whole body will change into a black and yellow in the Western Cape. 
if it's a male. Look at that beautiful emerald green eye. Isn't that stunning? He's sniffing me now. This is quite dangerous, but I'm very relaxed and very gentle. You'll see what they also come do is they actually come sniff you, come check you out. Look at this. Look, he's sniffing me there. Snakes smell with their tongues. So every time that tongue comes out, he catches little scent particles in the air, brings it back to the roof of the mouth where he's got a Jacobson's organ, and that relays the image to the brain. And he's like, okay, this is what this guy's beautiful eyes. Look at him checking me out. Amazing. What spectacular. There's so much diversity in these wetlands. Every day I'm running into something else. And I'm very happy to find a little one-year-old Boomslung baby. Really amazing. I'm going to let him on his way. Look how quickly he darts off. As soon as I let him go, he's gone. Look at this. Just remarkable how all these little creatures fit in here in this unique ecosystem which we call the Kuchelberg's biosphere. Really amazing. Oh wow, look what I've got here. It's a boomslang. I've got him by the tail. This is one of the most venomous snakes in Africa. Drop for drop, one of the most venomous snakes in the world. See if I can pull them out. To be so careful, even though they're a back fanged snake, they've got a very potent hemotoxic venom. So when this guy bites you, you're going to bleed out of every orifice on your body. So you do not want to get bitten by this guy. And look at this beautiful snake. Beautiful yellow and black. Oh, I've got him out. Just to be very, very gentle. See, he just wants to go back. Now, if I'm very gentle, even with the most deadly snake, this guy shouldn't give me too much trouble. All he wants to go is back to the tree. Ew. Almost went for me there in my face. You can see you have to be very, very careful with this guy. And you'll see, he'll just move away. What a magnificent fight. Let's see if I can get one last shot of this guy. Just give me a sniff, because normally they do that with their, with their little tongue. But come over. You can see he's smelling me. He smelled me there for a bit. Such a powerful venom that this snake has, but even with all that power, he's actually very, very gentle. You see, he's gone completely gentle in my hands. And it's such a humbling experience to be able to handle a snake so venomous, and he just completely relaxed in my hand. And it just shows you that they're not actually evil animals, and all he really wants to do is just live up here in the trees and hunt all the little animals around here. Very, very, very docile, and actually such a magnificent creature with all this beautiful colorations on him. Great eyesight. This guy can see even better than humans. It's got full optical zoom on its eye, and it can spot a chameleon or a bird from over 50 meters away. So incredible, incredible find right here in the wetlands. And I'm going to put him back into the tree now so he can move off. I was watering the garden this morning and as I normally do I stop here and I start just feeding the vine through the wire fence and in the bald patch of the wire fence exactly where I was going to feed the vine I saw this grey and yellow bellied giant snake. It's quite a big specimen, it's completely wrapped up. Now the Boomslang is drop for drop Africa's most venomous snake. It takes one milligram of its venom to kill a fully grown adult. But it's a hemotoxic venom. It's not uh, as potent as, say, the neurotoxic venoms, and there's a delayed reaction on it. So if this wormstung bite me, I'd have a up to a 24-hour delay before I have the first symptoms. And it's normally hemorrhaging from every orifice in your body. Um, so even though it's incredibly toxic, it's a very slow-acting venom. So it's not as deadly as the Cape Cobra, but the toxicity level of the venom is 10 times greater than that of the Cape Cobra. Now you can see it's quite a big snake, it looks to me like at least over a meter, 1.2 meters and it's confined to a small space like this. Now you can see what happens in Africa, people come and pick fruit and by mistake they grab onto the snake and they get bit. And it's not that the snake is aggressive or anything, it's just defending itself. So this is an accident waiting to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the snake, I'm going to put it in a bucket and I'm going to move it away from this, the, this homestead. Because humans and snakes and domestic animals don't normally work well together. And these worm slungs, if they bite a dog or a cat, um, really the venom has a very potent effect on them. Working in a bush like this makes it very difficult. Got him. So that was quite a, a risky grab because I couldn't actually see his head. But I got the body now. Luckily it wasn't the wrong side. Luckily it was the tail side and not the head side. Um, looks like quite a big specimen. I don't want to hurt the snake, so what it's going to do now is going to fight. It's going to use its body. It's a very muscular body. Like I said, they've got over 400 ribs in the body, and he's going to grab onto everything he can. But if I take my time slowly, eventually he'll come out. 
I don't want to hurt him. You can see he's already started secreting a bit. This is a nice defense mechanism. You can see they're secreting a bit of a, a bit of fecal matter to deter me from eating him. Because at the moment now he thinks I want to eat him. Unfortunately, this is not the way I would have wanted it to go. I would have had, wanted to like gently pull him out. But now I'm going to have to hold on. Otherwise he'll just disappear again. And we have to unfortunately move him away from me. There he's giving me a bit of leeway. See, and then you just wait again. I'm not going to use any, any um, strain. I'm not going to pull him hard or try and rip him out. I'm just going to wait. And slowly work him out. Wait for a bit, he'll soften the muscle. There I go, I can get another centimeter. You see, it's just a slow battle. And slowly he'll come out. There he gives me another centimeter. So I wait for the quail to go back in again. And there we go, I'm almost there. There he's coming out now. He's eaten something. He's definitely eaten something. I can see his body's really fat. This is a male worm slime. You can see that inflating of the throat. I'm gonna bring him into the sun. That is a sign that he's not impressed with me. See that inflating throat? That is, um, he's not happy. And the reason is because of the way I had to pull him out there now. And I think I want to eat him. So he's not very relaxed. You can see that throat. You see how in throat? So it's like a cobra making hood. He's warning me now. Let me go or I'm going to bite you with an incredibly potent venom. See that throat? That's very intimidating. And um, that normally scares most animals away to move away and leave them alone. Very aware of what's going on. These guys have, uh, are day active snakes, we call them diurnal snakes, and they've got the best eyesight of any snake in the world. They can actually spot a chameleon from up to 50 meters away. They see in full color, it's almost like, you can, like they've got optical zoom on their eyes, so they can actually zoom in on, on prey items. It's a great vision, full color vision, um, so they know everything that's going on, they can see all of us here, and that's why bites from the snake are so rare, because they're so aware of what's going on around them, that it's very, very rare that you actually encounter one or grab one because they normally move off. They're quite a fast moving snake. All he wants to do is get away. I mean, even if I step right in front of him like this, he's not trying to bite me. He's inflating his throat a little bit, but look, if I let go of him, all he'll do is move away again. Trying everything not to bite me. And even though I'm grabbing him, so there is no real, even if I had to leave him right, right next to me like this. There he gave me a bit of a bite now because my foot came right in front of him. But other than that, I'd literally have to be right next to him, and that's just a bump of the nose. That wasn't a proper bite. That's just a warning. Your snakes love to do that. They just bump their nose against you just to tell you, if you come any closer, I'm going to bite you. And see, once again, he's not really wanting to bite. I'm right next to him. He's checking me out. There, he lets it go. So, all they really want to do is get away. That inflating throat and that biting is a very last resort. It's literally, you really have to go out of your way or by mistake grab him and hurt him him to actually bite you but they would never vindictively come after you and try and bite you even though he's one of the most deadly snakes in africa all he wants to do if i let go now is he would move away and get as far away from me as possible and when dogs and things get bitten it's the same thing they get too close and they try and bite him and he just defends his life i'm being very gentle with him and i start he's starting to relax a little bit in my hands i can feel the change coming now so see actually even though he's the deadliest snake look there he's starting to relax and the throat's going down um He's starting to relax. He's sniffing me, seeing, oh, maybe I'm not that dangerous. Maybe I'm not actually trying to kill him. He's still very aware of me. He's still looking at me. But he's completely relaxing down. And I'm going to put him away just now. Don't want to do too much. We still want to keep the snake kind of wild. Because he has to go back into the wild again. But you can see how he's settling now. Completely wild snake. Just trying to bite me. Inflating his throat. Now it's starting to settle more and more. Where I can almost completely free handle him. And you can see it's almost to the point now where I can completely relax. My demeanor is relaxed now. He's relaxing. The snake looks like about 1.2 meters. We're going to try and release him as far away from human habitat as possible. Um, they're quite in the Western Cape. They quite like the mountain outcrops. And I found that there's quite a lot of birds nesting there. So it's a good place. These snakes love eating birds. Um, and if you put them anywhere near human habitation, they normally get encountered. And humans obviously don't want to see these guys near their home because they could kill family members or even your domestic pets. Very gently now, I'm going to put them into a tub. Very gently. Lift the lid. One last glimpse of camera. And you're going in very gently, very softly. Just put them in. And he'll just relax there until we're done. Close this up.
and that's the job well done. I'm always happy when we can come and relocate these snakes, move them from people's houses. No one got bitten, I didn't get bitten, none of the animals around here, and we're gonna move them far up where you can have live a happy life. And these snakes can live up to 20, 25 years of age. And I'd say this is not a very old snake, so we're looking at about five to eight years of age. So he's still got a long life ahead of him and a lot of hunting to do. We seem to have a lot of snakes. Like every time I mow, there's snakes running past, but then normally they're just those brown house snakes, or garden snakes. Um, but yeah, we've had three puff adders since we've been here, and this snake, um, and then a whole lot of other smaller snakes. I think they like us because we're vegetarian and we don't affect them. I don't know, but I don't like them. <laughs> so yeah, well, I'm just grateful that it's gone. Okay, another successful call out today. We've got two snakes here today, a boomsang and a puff adder. It's a nice overcast day, we're expecting some rain, so all the snakes were out on the move. We rescued these two snakes before any dogs or any other animals could harm them. And now I'm going to release them here on my farm. We're going to go for a little walk and pick a perfect spot a little bit further away from the house. And we're going to release these guys into this nice thick at the Fainbos and foresty area. They're both very prolific in the Fainbos and in the forest. So let's go out and see if we can find a nice little spot to let these two cuties go. As you can see, we've got a nice thick grass on here up at the top. Great for the puff adders. We've got a lot of striped field mice here. But I want to take them a little further away from the house. The Boomsan obviously loves to climb trees. There's a lot of trees here, but we're just going to cut through the, the thicket here a bit and get to a better spot. Let's go bundu bashing a bit. Don't want to step onto another puff adder while we're walking here. I do only have my swaps on, but. Um, it's very rare to actually step on these guys. They're actually quite wild camouflage and hidden. Warm these close under trees and stuff. Let's find a nice spot to let them go. As you can see here, yeah, this is now the Fainbos region. Fainbos is a very complex plant biome within southern Africa. And this is a favorite amongst the puff adders. And the Boomsons also do well because a lot of smaller birds nest in these kind of shrubberies. So I'm going to go a little bit further down and we're going to let these guys go. I think we find a nice little opening yeah. Nice to release them and nice for you to be able to see them. We've got a bit of light here just before the rains are coming in. You can see we've got nice uh, nice climb foliage for the worms to climb in and a lot of nice low-lying grass and fables for the puff adder to go and hunt striped field mice. Let's see how jumpy these guys are. I'm gonna start by opening this club. They're both hiding at the moment. I'm gonna start with the puff. One of them actually Here's the boom sign, the boom sign, I'll stop with the puffy. Let's see, look at that. Beautiful female puff adder. Small little tail. It's going to be gentle with her. Oh, tricky when they're this small. She's a little bit, let me just grab a little stick here in case. When they're short and small like this, they're quite difficult to gauge, but incredibly fast striking snakes, these puff adders. Look at those beautiful markings under the body. Such a beautiful specimen. Rare for down here in the Cape for them to be this kind of dull in color. They're normally quite bright and yellow. But she's very, she's sitting there. Oh, she's a little bit. See, if you just go very gently, it's trying to, they can strike around so quickly. I just, well, you've got to be starting to half a bit. She's a little bit upset. Look at that. One of the short, it's very difficult. Look at that spectacular specimen. What a miraculous puff adder. And still a youngster. Already sexually mature, can definitely already produce babies, but these guys can get over a meter in length. This one is only about 50, 60 centimeters. But real, really gentle actually. So gentle. Look at those big nostrils in the front. And that's where the now puff adder comes from. They make a loud huffing sound by forcing a large amount of air through those big nostrils in the front really love puff adders you can look at the camouflage on the ground here you can imagine if this snake had to sit absolutely still in ambush you would not see it and that's unfortunately where most of the bites come is people stepping on them it's very rare for a puff adder to be aggressive as you can see here she just wants to move along the boom song is hiding very well i'm just gonna grab the boom here beautiful colorful boom song look at that wow that is incredible. A puff adder and a boom slung. This boom is jumpy. Look at the colors on this boom slung though. Look at that. Come here. 
this Bwemi just wants to dart off. That is incredible. Look at them. Two of the most famous snakes in Africa, the Bwemslang and the Pafada. Look at this puffy moving. Look at that. Ooh. Look at that nice color comparison of two of Africa's most infamous creatures. The colorful male Bwemslang of the Western Cape and the Pafada. One is a ground ambush hunter, the other one is an active hunter in the trees and the shrubs. So rare to see them. And look, they, they don't harm each other at all. Such a beautiful specimen. And I'm going to let them go. I'm going to move them to the other side because this is going towards my house. And I just want this puffy is so short. Okay, let's put you guys on this side. Okay, just support a little weight. And then I let them go. Look at them dart off. Come right behind me here. <coughs> Look at this camouflage. Look at how they're going to disappear. Boomsang will be off quickly. Look at the speed of this boomsang. There he goes. Wow. Gone. Look at the puff that are much slower moving. But look at the camouflage. Look at that snake blending. You will not see that snake if it wasn't moving. Designed for undergrowth hunting. I'm so glad that we could have helped those two snakes. And I'm always, always glad to go out and rescue snakes from in people's houses or near other livestock or animals. And I've got a nice safe space here on my farm where I can release them and they can live out the rest of their lives. That puffer will go on now, hunting striped field mice, keeping the rodent population under control. And that boom slime will be up in the trees hunting birds and chameleons. Two beautiful specimens and they live here side by side, very peacefully for millions of years. What a great save and what a great release. We've got a snake on the neighbor's house. Let's see if I can climb over this. Good. This is what you get out here in your neighbors. Hello. Do you guys have a snake in the house? Is it a boom? Is it a boom slime? Okay, cool. Alright. It's not that common for them to actually come in the house. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Hello. How's it going? Fine. How are you? Sure. It's hot today. So He's probably hiding. That I walked past and he went in behind where the light is, where the shoes are. Okay. When last did you see him? Uh, when Michael phone was probably about a minute. Oh, he's going outside. I can see him. I can see him, yeah. <coughs> Hang on. It's a female boom song. Oh, it's, it's actually yeah. Olive. <laughs> Look at the. <laughs> okay, let me just take him out to the back side, yeah? So it's actually not a black one, it's actually an olive color. Yeah, mom, move faster. <laughs> it's fine? Go. It's okay, it's okay. She's relaxed. She's very slow. This actual exact snake we've been seeing on that side, she's, you can see she's quite skinny. Can you keep her there? Mom, move yeah. more. Mom, move more. She's quite skinny. She's obviously hiding away from the heat. Oh, she was actually on her way out there. Yeah, I think she's been long enough. Very skinny. Look at that. <laughs> Do not come back in, snake. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly the same one I saw there tr eating, trying to eat a um, flycatcher's babies. Oh, okay. So, because it's such a hot day today, yeah. she's trying to go in. And this is the female, and the worms slung the male and female are different colors. Okay, so it's bl actually black, yeah. yeah. But because obviously she was inside this and the birds aren't very impressed. Yeah. And I just heard, I heard the slither before and I just saw the release. <laughs> wow, she's so stunning. Yeah. Very skinny. I'll take her that side. Thank you so very much. Cool ladies. Cheers. So <laughs> Pleasure.
Pleasure. Now don't go in there. It would take you. She she just wants to hide. She's actually not very aggressive at all. <laughs> bye bye. Look at that, what a beautiful olive female. Just like that. Helping out the neighbors. Um you know retaining inflating the throat a little bit now. Warning me. Um she's been an absolute sweetheart. It's very hot today, so she's obviously hiding away. And um now we'll release her in the trees here. Yeah? Gotta climb through one more fence, girl. And then we have made it. Okay. Let me climb. Don't get upset. I don't normally like working with snake sticks, but because I had to jump quickly over the fence, um, this is going to be tricky. Uh, oh, did it. Woo! All right. Okay, no more need for the snake stick. We'll let her go on her way. Look at how gentle she is. Such a beautiful snake. Such a stunning females. Not a very big specimen. We've just come out of quite a cold spell, so she definitely needs to eat. Need to find some birds to eat. She's a bit skinny. We're gonna put her here in the forest so she can go hunt some birds. We'll take her in quite nice and deep here. Yeah? Um, and hopefully she doesn't return anytime soon. A lot of thorns here. Yeah? But I'm just gonna put you back in here, yeah, girl. Let's just put you back here. Yeah? All right, there in the sun, there's still lots of birds breeding and laying eggs so she can go hunt and find some food. All right, here you go, girl. Let's put you up here. Woo! Okay, she has been a very, she's been, whoa, she's come, 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 very strong. You see how to support the own body weight. Inflating the throat now, she's had enough. Let's put her here. Look at that, she's gonna be gone. Wow. Woo! I'm just on my way back to my farm now. I just got a call out for two worm slung. And when I got there, it was actually four. A male, a female, and then another two males. The one male actually got bitten by the dog there. Um, I've sprayed it with some, some antiseptic and I'm gonna keep it overnight to look for recover. But we're gonna let these other guys go here on my farm. It's perfect for worm slung. And now um, yeah, the road's a bit bumpy, yeah? I'm gonna let them go and see what happens the rest of their little life. Ooh. drive to my perimeter fence um, and just releasing it through as you can see there's lots of thick flame boss and I've got a big section of indigenous forest down the slope yeah so I think I'm just gonna release them there through the fence and um, hopefully they survive and have a great life out here there's quite a few other bobs on here and they can be quite territorial but I think these guys will move on and find a spot they'll be happy. They are not loved in the cities, even though the Bumson is quite a relaxed and gentle stack. They obviously do pack an incredibly potent in the of them. Okay, let me get them out. I'll start with the... The one male that I put in, the one male is unfortunately injured. The dog at this property that I've collected them got bitten in mid body. I've sprayed him and treated him. Um, the other male is fine, so they're probably going to want to bounce out the other one. Let me just ooh, look at that, the head's already out. Sure. Very, very shy snakes. Oh, we've got two of them. Look at this. This is the injured one. Serious injury on the mid body there, as you can see. I just don't want him to go off yet. I want to see his movement. Look at this beautiful color, right? Yo, look at this guy coming in and out. I want you to stay there. Oh, look at him just now. I'm just going to deal with one at a time here at first. Okay. Come back in. Come back in. Such see how gentle the snake is. And he's been bitten by a dog and everything. And he's still so relaxed. I sometimes feel like they know that we're trying to rescue them. Now, very interesting. Come back here. Yes, this guy's already camouflaged into the grass. I'm going to pull him out here. Look at the beautiful coloration, and this is typical of the Western Cape worm slungs. So we are in the garden route of Plettenberg Bay region, and these snakes have beautiful markings. 
almost like little zebra markings yellow bands across this is a particularly beautiful specimen and this is a male worm so the females which i'll show you now we've got one is more of an olive color um they can get quite a bit bigger than this so this is not full grown you can see this guy just wants to get going what i'm going to do is i'm going to put him here on the fence and he can decide which way he wants to go just look at how while he camouflages here with these flowers look how quickly this thing's going to disappear now incredible specimen yeah and he is gone okay let's get back to this one let's see what's the damage i just quickly treated him I'd, unfortunately with these snakes once they get injured like oh, this is a bad injury you can see how, i'm gonna show you i sprayed him with that purple spray that's antiseptic but you can see that there's real damage here and i think he, his spine might be broken unfortunately um i'll keep him for observation for a while but you can see that is pretty bad the dog bit him flush I did treat him and he does seem to still have a bit of life um but shame and it's quite a beautiful specimen now notice how much darker this one is actually than the previous one and also slightly bigger also a male but unfortunately my friend you got a really bad injury um yeah it's very difficult to tell if you'll make it or not at this stage but it looks pretty bad to me and it's a pretty serious i'll put him down quickly to see how he moves Not very well, as you can see, there's a problem with the spine. I'm going to be very, I don't want it again to go just yet. Um, so we'll follow this guy. I'll keep him under observation for a day or two, and then we'll make the decision. We also have a local snake pot that does rehabilitations. So I'll call Mike, that owns the Lawnwood Snake Sanctuary, and we'll have a check and see. Um, it's pretty. It's not going to go septic, but when the spine is damaged like that, it's sometimes a problem, especially if you have to imagine these guys have to hunt birds and stuff in the wild. I'm going to put him back. It's okay, my friend. It's okay. Hey, sorry, man. Sorry, check how gentle he is, actually. Hey? Sorry, my friend. You see that beautiful big eyes? Okay, I'm just going to put you back. And you just relax. And then we'll get to him. And then I've got another two, a monstrous male. I'm just going to put this guy out of the sun. And now it's the big guys. So the female, you'll see, I'll try and take out first, yeah? The females are normally the olive color. And for every like five to six um, males we catch in this area, you get one female. So the females are quite rare. And it is springtime here now, so they're all very active. They're wrapped up in this little blankie I put in here for them. Let's try and pull out the female first without her jumping out here. There she, oof, okay, that's the big male. I don't actually want the big male coming out just yet. difference you wouldn't even think that's the same species of snake and this is now your female worm slung beautiful olive color also that same rugby ball shaped head with the large eye incredible snake and a lot of people mistake them for cobras actually I, the, the, the original phone call i got was someone saw a brown cobra the cape cobra but it was actually this beautiful female and they'll put off a pheromone in the air in spring and it will lure all the males to come and mate that's why on this one property in the same area i caught four different worm slung so it's common in this time of year to get quite a lot of snakes confined into one region because they come out to mate and there's not that many females around so look at just look at how spectacularly beautiful she is and she almost has also like a gentle presence about her such an incredible animal you can see the killed scales they've got a bit of a rough scale so they're quite easy to identify and by far the largest eye of any of the snakes look how curious she's just curious and actually not aggressive at all even though they were just uh, um being charged by dogs and they're actually more scared than anything else she's pretty relaxed look at that very relaxed just sniffing and sniffing and sniffing i love the females because you don't get to see them very often they're very elusive and you can imagine how quickly she'll disappear here in the tree the treetops spectacular animal i want to try and bring out the the male at the same time as the female so that we can see a comparison so this is a big boy in here now i'm gonna try we'll see how it goes where's this big boy oh, he's a big snake don't bite now you'll see a big male this is a big boy look at the size of this male 
you can see much bigger than the female this is a proper adult specimen worm slug really really also a lot more a lot more hyped up and look now if i'm very gentle with him i just put oh, this is a, such a specimen look at that snake the power in his body is just otherworldly i'm just gonna try and get this girl you see how i can make them relax actually if you just very gently pick them i just want to get them together yeah look at this look at that how spectacular is that just remarkable to be able to hold the male and the female together like this this is actually a first for me she doesn't seem to be too good. i just have to be careful obviously because these guys do pack one of the most toxic venoms of any known tree snake in the whole world and drop for drop one of africa's most venomous snakes incredibly powerful hematoxic venom that makes you um, hemorrhage inside and you start bleeding out of all of your orifices so a very potent hemp venom they don't produce a large amount of it but only one milligram is fatal in an adult um, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put them both on the fence and they can go on their way so lucky that i got there just in time because the dogs were going crazy with them and i'm so lucky to have been able to handle a male and a female at the same time just look at that and look how beautiful this male is i'm going to actually let the female go first i just want to hold this male for one last second he's such a big big specimen i'll put you on the fence yeah so you can move on look at that stunning snake yeah look they just glide look at the glide now look at that and she's gone yeah but this male is an incredible specimen sure just the strength in his body alone and what these snakes will do now is um they'll go out and feed fully so during the winter months here in the cape they don't eat much but now it's springtime you can see all the flowers and then they start eating and they will climb into other birds nests and eat baby birds and all sorts of chameleons and other creatures around there not very common to take mice mostly birds and chameleons in this region so this snake will pick up same particles with their tongue you'll go off and you'll find birds nests which is one of their favorites is to find those new fledglings or baby birds and they'll eat three or four of them easy quickly in one go and i normally can hear when there's a boom song in the area the birds will start going wild but just so much respect for them and just look at how gentle they are very gentle snakes and you got to remember these guys have been under stress now there was dogs attacking them i had to put them in a small tub drive them all the way here and still look at not even a sign of aggression and normally they'll inflate their throat to show that they they mean business and they're angry but nothing at all and that's when you're very gentle with them and you use very gentle energy when you handle them and this guy's completely relaxed look how relaxed he is now completely relaxed just like not even inflating the throat and i'm gonna let you go what an honor to work with such a big male worm song i'm gonna put him a little bit higher so we can check him glide down look at 